Freaking just another YouTuber trying to tell me how to get an anamorphic shot. Freaking idiots. Roger Deakins doesn't even like anamorphics. And they always like, ignore that it takes, you know, cool lighting and diffusion filters and and Ari Alexas and big budgets. That's how you get a cinematic look. Stupid. But he says, let's see. He just says, slap it on. Put your lens to infinity. Put a flush on it. Put Get those cool anamorphic flares. Make sure it's aligned. And then magically, you just got a cool anamorphic shot. Oh, oh look at the flares. Look, looks so cinematic. Freaking idiot. I guess it kind of looks cinematic though. I would never tell him that in the comments though. I freaking hate him. Thought I'd just poke a little fun at some of the comments I get on some of my videos. I'm gonna show you a little 90 second short film that my buddy Jericho and I shot on the fly and it all kind of revolves around the topic of this video. But before we get into all that, let me first acknowledge that I am aware that there's a lot more to getting uh, a cinematic image beyond just shooting anamorphic. You got your storytelling, your lighting, your set design, and even sound, which we'll get into a tiny bit here in this video. Specifically for this video, we're gonna be talking about anamorphics. Now, I shot the film on the Canon FD 50mm 1.4 and the 100mm f2.8 with the Blazar Neuro. We'll also be going over the Lao 1.33x adapter too. But before we get into anything, let's watch the film. If you're not into it, I'll have chapter marks so you just skip over it. I know some of you guys hate uh, YouTuber films. I know time's worth more than anything else these days. Revenge is worth more than that. And I like to tell the person who took that life away from me. But it's a little too late for them. I guess you could call me the richest man alive right now. But I sure don't feel that way. I think anamorphic front adapters are one of the easiest and best ways to get into anamorphics. I know when I first fell into the rabbit hole of anamorphics, front adapters, they were totally like a mystery to me and I thought they were really difficult to use, but you know, fast forward a few years, we now have a grip of different options. I think the coolest thing about this is instead of just buying one set of anamorphics and always having that look, you can put it on a newer lens or you can put on an older lens and get an older look out of it. You could change the type of flares, you could change your bokeh. There's a million different ways to pair up these adapters with your taking lens. And before anyone asks, all the drone shots were with the DJI Mini 3 Pro, which is insane, and all the audios from audio.com, which is actually the sponsor of this video, which is super sick because they're doing something that has not been done before. So instead of us taking hours and hours and hours to search for a song that sounds like some of our favorite songs that we listen to on Spotify, we can now copy the link for Spotify and paste it and audio will show you all the similar songs they have that sound just like that song. This is mind blowing. I wish we had this years ago because it would have literally saved me days on days on days. Even when it comes to clients, a lot of times they have playlists or they have commercial songs that they send you and you have to go through and spend hours looking for similar songs. Now you can literally just put that link into to there and you're gonna have all the similar sounding songs and you can send them all those tracks. If you want unlimited link mat searches with Audio Pro, you can sign up for just $59 for your first year when you use my link and code CAM70. I'll put a link in the code down in the description below. So for this film, I really wanted that Sicario vibe. Sicario is one of my favorite films and I freaking love the soundtrack. Copy the link from my favorite song on that soundtrack, just pasted it. And literally the second song on the list was literally the most perfect song for what I was imagining for this short film. But yeah. 
Anyways, back to the video. So we're gonna be breaking down this video into three parts, why, what, and how. So let's just start with the why. When I think of cinema, I think of anamorphic. I love anamorphic so much that if a movie is not that great, but it's shot anamorphic, like I will still kind of enjoy the film just because it kind of takes me on my own world and it puts me in the surreal story that the film's trying to tell us. So to me, you know, anamorphic's a cheat code. When you first get into anamorphics, you soon realize like if you want good anamorphics, they're very expensive. You know, just a few years ago, if you wanted a good anamorphic, like you're gonna have to pay like 15K or more. And now we're just being flooded with all these amazing anamorphic options. But if you want to buy a full set of anamorphics, you're gonna be paying a pretty penny. And this day and age, we have a lot of deliverables that we have to execute on, uh, whether it's nine by 16 or 16 by nine. Half of the time, like I can't shoot anamorphic on paid projects because, you know, they don't, they don't need that, even though I would love to do that anyways. And so instead of investing into a full set of anamorphics, you can invest into your spherical primes that you can use on any project and you could do any final deliverable on, on sphericals, but then you can just buy one of your anamorphic front adapters and you can slap that onto either of your lenses and boom, there you go. You have a full set of anamorphics. So now that we went over why, let's talk about what, and then we'll get into the house. So what? All right, guys, for the taking lens portion of this video, I'm going to show you four or five different options. Uh, I just want to show you how versatile all this can be when you're using one adapter. Starting off, we'll start with the Canon FDs. Again, that's what I shot the film on because I want that like more vintage retro soft like halation type look. Uh, and so pairing it with the FDs gave me that look. We'll do the polar opposite from there, which is a 40 millimeter from Sony. It's a f2.5. You'll see how much more cleaner and sharper and clinical it looks. From there, we'll do the Dolan set of lenses. The Dolan's is like some of the, like the best taking lenses you can use for anamorphics. The Blazar, there might be some issues with that. We'll go into that. And then after that, I'm going to show you the Laowa 1.33x adapter on the whole Laowa system, just because it shows like the, the options that are out there. With this adapter, we compare it to the Nanomorphs or the Laowa Rangers. You'll see how versatile and vast the options are. The reason I'm including both of these, we'll start with the Blazar Neuro. This is probably one of my uh, favorite front adapters that have come out recently because of the size. It's 1.5x stretch and it has like, uh, it leans more towards that barrel distortion, that Panavision type look. There's a lot of workarounds with this strictly because of how small it is. This won't work on a larger lens. You gotta use smaller primes with this so it kind of limits your lens options. The glass quality on here is not the greatest, it's not the sharpest, but overall this is still my favorite looking adapter right now. The Lao 1.33X adapter, this thing just came out as well. It's way bigger, way heavier, a lot more glass in it, and it's only 1.33X, but this one's a lot more versatile because you're able to use it on pretty much any lens that you want to. When we get into the how, you'll see there's different, uh, I would kind of say almost mandatory ways of rigging this compared to just slapping this on a lens. We're gonna start with the Blazar Neuro because this is one of the easiest adapters to play with. If you get this, I highly recommend you also get the adapter ring set for it because it's just gonna make your life easy. But since this adapter is so light, I never use a lens support with this, but this is how easy the setup is. I'm gonna just put this adapter ring on there. I'm gonna just screw it on. I'm just gonna get my Canon FD 50 millimeter. I'm gonna screw onto the front there. You just get the side button here, push it in and you align it. Simply click it and you just twist it and once you get it aligned, it just locks back in and there you go. This is one of the most important parts. If you do not do this, it's going to make your footage all funky and you won't be able to use any of it. So it's very important that you get this correct. The easiest way to do this is to either get your phone's LED light or a flashlight, put it directly into the lens and align that horizontal flare so it's straight and perfect. Also guys, real quick, if you're enjoying this video, subscribe because I actually have like maybe six or seven other anamorphic videos lined up. I got a lot more other like filmmaking stuff and bigger projects and uh, cool little inside stuff that I'll be sharing. So I actually love pairing this adapter with these Canon FDs because it gives me that, that retro look. When I want a cleaner look though, I will use, I will use my Sony 40 millimeter F2.5. The only issue with this is it's focused by wire and it's hard to get this affinity. It's focused by wire. It's really hard to See you when you're at end point. I think that's it right there. A lot of times I will uh, gaff tape uh, the focus on here so it doesn't get moved at all. But you guys will see the narrow pair with the FDs, you get that 70s look. When it's paired with the Sony 40 millimeter, it looks night and day. It almost looks like a modern day, like super clean anamorphic. This still has some like chromatic aberrations, which I don't mind. A lot of you guys are putting uh, halation and post, but if you're someone that owns larger sphericals, um, this might not work out. And so you have things like the Moment adapter, you have this Laowa adapter, you have the Avascope. The cool thing about this Laowa adapter is if you have any Laowa lenses, 
that kind of built an ecosystem around this. Let me get my Rangers out here. But the Lauer Nanomorphs front is a 77 millimeter adapter. The Lauer Rangers, 77 millimeter. The back of this anamorphic adapter, 77 millimeter. So I could just screw this on here and I will be doing a lens review on the setup, but this is now a parfocal anamorphic zoom. They're made to be together basically. So that's what's cool about these larger adapters. Now, this is a very, very, very heavy lens. So if you're going to do a setup like this, you need to run rails and you need to run lens support. The cool thing is when you do a lens support, it's kind of perfectly aligned. And so you don't even have to screw this on. What you could do is when your lens support is on there, you could just move it up on the rails, swap lenses out, put it back on and nudge the adapter back onto the lens. So I got a bunch of glass in front of me now, but uh, this is just me trying to do my part and introduce some of you people into, you know, anamorphic front adapters. Uh, anamorphics are becoming way more popular these days. And I know some of us are on a budget and instead of, you know, spending five to $10,000 on an anamorphic set of primes, just get one adapter and use them on the current lenses you already have. If you want more in-depth knowledge and information, all this, I highly recommend you go check out Cheetos channel. Again, he is like the anamorphic encyclopedia of online internet, the world wide web, whatever you want to call it. I will put a link down in the description to his channel so you can check that out. Um, but yeah guys, that's pretty much it. Yeah.